Hello everyone, this is Yolanda. Let me try to get this uh, camera here. I don't know what's going on. I'm trying to get it here on the little tripod. If I can, sorry about my hand right there. I'll try to remove it as soon as I can. Okay, so I think my son used my tripod because it's all like in a different position. So, well, what are you going to do, right? So let me move these things here. Um, I don't know if you guys can see me yet, but I just wanted to show you what I'm working on. Okay, so I'll just bring it up here. Hi, Maria. <laughs> when is that this? So, um, I am working on a retro style sweater. It looks kind of weird right now. It just looks like a cape because I haven't separated it yet. So, this is kind of what it looks like right now. And then you're going to, I'm going to separate it. Oh, wow. Somebody said they're working on my sweater pattern right now. So this is a retro one. <laughs> Hi, John. So this is a retro sweater, kind of like we used to wear in the 70s. And this is actually a pattern that I got from the Inspiration. I think it used to be, yep, yeah, it used to be a Red Heart pattern. But if you go to their website, yarnspirations.com, you'll be able to find this one. Hello, Betty and Gladys. Oh, and with a Y. Wow, that's really fun. So I decided to change up the colors because I really um, like colors, shades of purple, and it uses five different colors. So um, I wanted to make sure that I didn't get kind of confused because there's a lot of, you know, like when you're working with a lot of different parts. Let me see if I can um, get this here to work. Sorry guys, I'm trying to just get all of this stuff here going. I'm gonna I'm gonna mute the computer so that I can see what we're doing right now. Okay, so this is the sweater. It is in yard inspirations. You know what? I don't see the number, but it is called the vintage stripe jacket crochet. And it was last updated in August of last year. Okay, it's called the Crochet Vintage Stripe Jacket. And it's the first page just shows you the picture and a few things. Hi, Becky. She's in from, from uh, Kentucky. How are you guys doing? So here, I'm going to let me turn this around so that you guys can see what I'm working on. Hopefully, you'll be able to see it. It's kind of messy right now, but let me see if I could spin the camera around. And then I'll just kind of do this a little bit down. Wow. I'm not really good at this stuff, guys. <laughs> so here, what I have done, I'll just show you guys. Uh, I'm organizing a little bit of the yarn. Since it has five colors, I just put the different colors. Um, they're not all the same brand. Like this is like Red Hard with Love, which is super soft. So this is my E color. That's the one I'm working on right now on this little edge. And then the rest, I have my A, D, C, and then I just kind of labeled them. I have more of this B um, here is the B. So I just kind of label them to keep them, keep track of it. Hi, Francine. Becky, she said they're staying in from the virus. Yeah, you guys it need to stay in because, you know, um, it's so um, contagious, I guess. And so... I have been quarantined for 14 days by my doctor. Now he wants me to stay in longer. So now I don't know how that's going to go. So you could see how it kind of looks like a cape. It's all wavy right now. So this is, I'm working on the last row before you start separating for the sleeves. A lot of people have asked me, how do you separate it for the sleeve? You're just going to follow the instructions here. And you can use stitch markers. Let me get my stitch marker. Oh, here they are stitch markers and then when it tells you here like you're going to start dividing for the sleeves it will tell you to keep working in the pattern which is this you know two double crochets and then separate them like a granny, like a granny stitch but you're going to be working that with e which is the color i'm using right now i'm going to do one more i'm almost finished with the row and then i'm going to keep working in the pattern i'm going to work 24 stitches and then so here once i do the 24 stitches where's my yarn 
I'm going to go ahead and skip the next stitches. So let me just show you what I'm doing here. Hopefully you can understand kind of what it says here. Let me find the place where I left off. Here it is. And, okay. Where did my crochet hook fall? <laughs> the dangers of doing live. I think I lost my hook somewhere. It should be around here. Where did you fall, crochet hook? Where did you fall? Oops. Here it is. Sorry, guys. So here, I'm working on the last row of this purple, and then I'm going to divide for the sleeves. So once I finish here, I'm going to come to here. And then when I start working on the way back, it just says to, to work 24 of the, the little patterns. So here's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. I think that's what it is, is it? Well, anyway, we're just going to count the, the patterns. Uh, uh, yeah, and then after that, and then after that, you're going to put a little stitch marker there. Then you're going to skip the next 36 little stitches of patterns. And then you keep doing that. Then you start working again. If Have you seen the, if you guys have seen the pictures, the video for the baby sweaters, it's something like that. So once like say that this is, let's pretend this is 24. I would put my stitch mark here and then they would tell me to skip how many. I would skip that many and then I would start again here. Like say this is a sleeve. I know this is smaller, but let's just pretend. But it's going to be a lot bigger, probably like this. And then you start. Your next stitches would start here. And you work as many as they tell you to. And then you skip the next few for the other sleeve. And then when you start working for the body, these you're, you're going to work these separately as the sleeves. So the sleeve will tell you row one, row two. You're going to go around in circles for here. And for the body, because somebody wrote to me to ask me, for the body, you're going to continue here across the body part. And then wherever your other sleeve is, you're going to skip that. Like I said, pretend those are the two sleeves, okay? Let's pretend these two are our two sleeves. So then you would skip right here. You would just work along the front, come here along the edge, come to your next edge and work the front. And you're working back and forth just to that front part. The sleeves then later on, when you come back and it tells you to work the sleeves, you're going to be working um, the sleeves going around in each sleeve following the color sequence. So it's, it's worked. The sweaters work from the neck down. So this is the neck. You're going to go down to the waist here. And then after you do your sleeves, you'll have your opening for your sleeves on one side, the opening on the other. Then the front last part you do is you do a border around the front. I know somebody's asking, probably thinking like, why are you doing this? Nobody wants to know. Well, this is what they had asked me to show them because they're working on this pattern and I think they got stuck. They didn't understand how to separate the sleeves. So here... I'm going to just show you kind of um, with this marker. This is not the right number because I haven't counted it, okay? And it depends on what size you're making because if your size is smaller or bigger, you're going to work less stitches. So let's pretend these were the stitches we were going to work. Like say, let's pretend like this was the 24 or, or whatever it was. You work those stitches and you skip the next, these, whatever they were for the, for the uh, sleeve. Then you work in the back, skip the next way. The same way i'm just i'm just guessing here because i'm just trying to kind of not stay on too long because guys i'm cooking at meal <laughs> i know that sounds so ridiculous but i still have that quarantine life going here so let me see if i could get back a little bit further so you could see you'll see all my mess but see so this would be the sl one sleeve the front one sleeve the back another sleeve and then the front so that's what i was saying about when when you keep working Hi, from London. Hi. Um, when you keep working, when it tells you to keep working the body right, you're going to work here. You're just going to keep working from here. Leave these alone. Work to the other edge, front, and then back and forth. You're just going to keep turning it and working on the front. Then when you're going to work your sleeves, then you're going to attach your yarn somewhere here. And then you're going to start working. Oops, sorry, guys. I knocked the, the tripod. And then you work your sleeves going around this way. Okay. Or I think it's, I don't know if you turn your work or not. Um, I think it's, 
think you do turn it, but if you turn it, you're going to be working basically this edge of one sleeve. And it tells you the color you want and you need to use and then the other sleeve. And the way you're working the color, the match, it will match the sleeves, the front side seams and the other side seam here. They will all match. So when you put your arm down, the match will the, the stripes will be matching. So if you could see on this picture here, it's kind of hard to see, but you see that all the stripes, her stripes are actually matching. Like they're what I mean by matching, I mean like they're lining up. Um, and if you follow the sequence correctly, that's how it's gonna go. Um so anyway. I know a lot of you guys are kind of having a hard time with um, if you have a lot of kids now you have to teach them and do everything else but if you could get a few minutes to yourself this is a pretty good um pretty good pattern so i know um i got like three re i guess i don't know when they put this up but i got like three emails this week about this um pattern on they didn't understand how you separate for the sleeves but that's how you do it so when the instructions tell you to crochet how many patterns you're going to keep in the same pattern and you're going to crochet the number of little repeats they tell you to then you're going to skip the number of repeats they tell you and then you start crocheting again in the next place so then this is it basically the stitch marker is just holding it there but this is how if you want to put the stitch marker in before so that you know when to stop and skip to the next one you're going to continue like if this wasn't there just pretend that wasn't there and then you're going to just continue your next stitch there then continue your next stitch your next stitch and go around so basically when it says that to leave it on work that's what it's talking about okay guys so that's how we're dividing them so then once you do that it's all divided your sleeves on each side your fronts in the front and then this portion would be uh the back right there so i hope that answers the question that um the person was asking because they were confused about how to separate the sleeves now this is the same way you separate a lot of the uh, sweaters or cardigans that are worked from the neck down um so i really like neck down kind of sweaters because i'm able to try it on as i'm going if it's too um if it's getting like too big or it's just i just think it's not work filling fitting me right i could go back and undo the uh, the stitches and start to try a smaller or um, also if it's long if it's not as long as I want I could add more rows and make it longer so that way you know some people like it just like to their waist that's cool and but some people want you to cover more of your you know your hips and your your uh, your front of your body in the back your you want to cover your tush so here I'm just going to have to of course uh, sew in my tails when I sew in the tails I am going to sew in like to like color so this one this tail i'm going to sew it into the matching yarn this one i'm going to sew it into this yarn i won't do it the other way because i don't want it to show there just like here these are both the same so i would just put them here and here oh actually this was different this was the little stripe one so that would be sewn into the stripe this would be sewn into the other lavender color this would go into the dark. This would go into the lavender. And then you that way you hide your strings. I um, A lot of times I'll sew my tails in as I'm going. But since right now, I want to see how it's going to look before. I'm going to, when I separate it for the sleeves, I'm going to try it on and see how it fits me. And if I'm okay with that, then I'll go ahead and start sewing in my tails as I go. So this is an easy project to try. Plus, it's a great way to use up a lot of the yarn that maybe you don't have a full skein because... Um, I think just the A is what takes the most yarn. A, the A, whatever color you choose for A, it's going to take more yarn. And the color that you choose for um, C. So those are the ones that you're going to need more yarn of. And remember, you don't have to go with those colors. Choose whatever colors you like. Just make, put them up on a color wheel and then you choose the color you like. Um, so... It, does anybody have any other questions about this pattern? Because, like I said, I got some of those to do this. I think this pattern is super fun because it's just still like that classic granny look. But I don't know why. I just like the retro look. I liked it, but I don't want... I didn't want to use uh, the green and yellow and 
pink and all those. I wanted to use a different color and I have a lot of purple. Purple and pink are like my favorite colors. So I have a lot of different shades of purple in my house. So like this one, you could see this was from a, a pound package. And so they're all like different shades of purple. And I did want to have a little bit of a variation, like just a little bit of color here on the strip. So you could kind of see that it gives you a little bit of pop of color there. Um, and so I chose this one, um, but you can use whatever color you want. And um, so this is my C color. And then I wasn't sure if I was going to use that one or this one, but when I tried this one and I put it on, it looked too like real pinkish. It was like a totally kind of a different, it, it kind of popped too much. So then I went ahead and went back to the this color and this color, what is it called? Which color is it? Oh, I just covered the color here. Huh. It's it's E300 or something like that, but you can choose whatever colors you want. So this is, I just wanted to let you guys know what I've been working on. I don't want to bore you <laughs> with so many details. And then also, um, I have been making face masks for our local hospital. I know there's a lot of, you know different controversy regarding the face mask, but my hospital my hospital um did require for this one i just follow the pattern your pattern for how many stitches i cast on i think for this one i did 63 and one of the things that i do like see it tells you here the stitches the sizes are in the um the printed one are for si the small but if you look at here this would be the small medium large and extra large i'm doing the extra large because i'm going to be wearing this over my clothing more like a little jacket kind of thing so here i always highlight the instructions that are going to go to my size okay so like this for the jacket i cast on 63 stitches if you were doing the small you would do 54 medium 57 um the lar large 60 and then the extra large is 60 Three, and then the 2x is 66 so it does go up to the 2x size and so just I would always recommend this just highlight the one the instruction that pertains to you so then I know how many and then it gives you the stitch count after every time you do and how many times you repeat it and I, you can see I've done that for the other page as well so that I can know which instructions pertain to myself and if you get kind of confused just do work them out in one instruction like uh, you know, do this how many times, do that, just repeat it. And then you could also use uh, different highlighting markers if you want so that you know what your instruction is. Uh, I'm not going to do the whole tutorial of this sweater because obviously it would take <laughs> hours. And um, uh, you know what? Um, somebody said it looks beautiful, but it looks a little bit complicated. It's not that complicated. Just write down, keep a little notepad and keep your instructions. And just keep track of how many rows you do. And you could always count because this is like one, two, three, four, five. You know, this is row 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So you know where you're going to be at because you could count down. And then just by, once you separate for the R and the sleeves, I think that's the most complicated part. Everything else is just working just those sections. So let me see. Uh, somebody, oh, Liz says she likes Liz says says she likes it. Um Oh, Mandy, I'm sorry. She says uh, she's in Florida and she says that she's in quarantine. It's driving her nuts. She said, I didn't know. She didn't think that homeschooling would be so rough. Yeah, you know, I, I, I worked in education for years and I think a lot of people don't realize how much how much work it is taking care of kids. And, and it's because you're just probably not used to it once. If you did it all the time, you'd have a routine and um, thankfully a lot of the schools now they are starting to do their distant learning where the kids are doing their um, lessons online I know that that's what they've started here um, but the schools here in Tula Vista the middle school and high school they're going to be closed for the remainder of the school year and I had signed up for a machine knitting class at an adult school in El Cajon and paid and I just got an email saying that and a voicemail saying that they have canceled so uh the basically the you're not doing it in the round because there is an end here for the the body you're not going to do in the round you're going to go 
back and forth okay just turn your work back and forth i haven't started working on the sleeves let me see what the instructions for the sleeves say but i'm pretty sure it is yeah you're just going to be working pretty much kind of like in the round and then you're going to fasten off after the last one let me see should you cross that see oh first stage back see Keep it in the pattern. No, I guess you're going to be chaining three. Going up. Go around here. Stop. Chain three. Turn. Go around. So you'll be happy to sew up the seam of the sleeve. It's, it's what it looks like to me. And that would actually make sense. Because then you wouldn't have that um, drag with the sleeve. Sometimes when you do on the round. How you you get that jog in your stripes. So I think this way you're just going to be chaining three. Then going finishing chaining three turning around going back all the way so you'll have two like little flaps you'll sew that uh a, like a rectangle i meant to say here so then you would have to close it off seam on there seam the sides but i'm going to show you hopefully <laughs> i'll get it done before they stop the quarantine because i think this is really cute um and uh if you wanted to do it for springtime try using cotton yarn you know because you could do it all one color. You don't have to make it stripey. You could do it all a select, solid color if you want. And then that way you don't get confused with the different stripe sequence. But the instructions do give you the sequence. And just as long as you mark your yarn like I did here, I know which, which yarn goes next because it'll tell me work two rows of C, work one row of this, work. So then I just keep working with the yarn. If you don't label it, it's a little harder. You might, you might get confused. Um, let me see here. Let me see what other questions you have or comments. Um, uh, let me see here. What is that? Yes, if you do use a uh, cotton, it will. It should be a little bit cooler and breathe better. So. Um, yeah, it should be okay. Let me see. We are not, uh, I have some, somebody saying they want to do amiguri. I do have some amiguri patterns, not too much because it, it does take quite a long video to do it or like three parts or something. So this is what I just wanted to explain how to do it. Um, your, the decreases on the sleeves I don't know if it has decreases. No, it, it doesn't look like it has decreases because they just look kind of wide, like just flared. See? So it doesn't look like there's a decrease. It looks like it's just a really wide. That's what I'm saying. It looks more like... Um, yeah, you know, it is very... When you... Before you separate for the sleeves, it is really rounded. It looks like a cape. Well... Um, yeah, some, what was, uh, you're right. It, it does look kind of like a cape. See how it's like rounded, but then this is going to be part of your neck, your shoulder. You know, this is part of your, the neck, the shoulders, and then the sleeve. Um, I don't see any decreases in the sleeve. So it's probably a pretty wide sleeve. Let me see the instructions for sleeves. Mm. Yeah, it doesn't look like there's uh, it doesn't look like there's any decreases in the sleeves, um, Christine. So um, I think it's just the same. But this was um, I'm gonna work on that, and if you guys have questions on it, let me know. It's a pretty easy one to work on, and then what I like about this is that you could kind of use up a lot of your fat, a lot of your yarn that maybe you you know you haven't been find a use for or if you want i like i would like i said you could make it you know you could make all of this uh one color and then do a big stripe for the you know a different color it, you don't have to do the stripe sequence it's totally up to you just as long as you do the number of rows that you need so that is what i was working on there so then guys i'm going to show you the mask i've been doing i know there was a lot of controversy and some people got i was surprised people got really negative about it because 
they were saying like that doesn't protect you i never said that this was an n95 type of mask it's just a mask that i've been doing these i was waiting for the elastic guys it was like a run on elastic i couldn't find elastic anywhere finally ordered some from ebay and i finally got it um yesterday so i was able to finish some of these this is the video i did and you just put it on your face and then you spread out the seams now before you say that that's not going to protect you i know it's not um to the level of like medical grade mask but um even on the tv they were saying if you don't have a mask or some hospitals were telling their i think it said that their hospitals were telling people to wear a bandana around their face i think this would be a lot more comfortable than bandana and this one is done with four layers of fabric it's all tightly woven this is just a muslin uh tightly woven and then a pretty uh, uh color here these are with ties because i was making these because i didn't have any more elastic now that i have elastic i'm making some with the elastic as well just bright happy colors so it's like jelly beans um but um i want to clarify that my local my two local hospitals here um have been requesting the handmade the sewn home sewn masks because they are so low and i think they use them for um people that they don't think are sick with covid or um, handing them out to people that come into the the hospital that are maybe just coughing or something or sneezing so that they could cover their sneeze and keep other people safe. So you need to check with your hospitals. My hospitals here, both of them in both of them are requesting them. So I'm going to make them. And um, so I know that some people were really negative about it. I kind of, got surprised and I wasn't sure it was because you didn't you didn't like having me make this kind of video like maybe you just come to the channel to see nice happy things and you don't want to see something like um you know something like remind you of the problems we're having but um I think it's a if they're asking if the people asking for it it would be a really nice thing to help them out so oh yeah Lisa said she made the little red riding hood um, for in white for a little girl flower girl um yeah this is yeah it kind of looks like a little red riding right riding um hood uh, thing here so you guys that's all i wanted to show you share what i've been working on go to my facebook page and post some pictures of what you are working on now and um let me know if you enjoy it um this is uh I, there's also i have a cricket here machine if you have a Cricut machine, there is a pattern on the design space. That's a free pattern. It's a little bit, it's a shape differently. It's like um, uh, more like rounded here for the nose and there's no pleats on it, but you can cut it with the um, uh, Cricut. Just make sure that you use a fabric grip mat. And also um, I did one, but I, I put the, the right side of the fabric up. And that was wrong. It needs to go down with the pretty side down because it does mark your pieces for you and stuff. So then it just marked it on the right side, which is not ideal. But just make sure you put it, if you do it, the one that's on the Cricut, make sure you put it, the fabric, uh, the pattern, the pretty size face down. And there is a tutorial, video tutorial to do that style mask on the official Cricut page on Facebook. So anyway, I better get going. I think my meatloaf is ready. <laughs> <laughs> the challenges of working from home and so then um thank you so much i hope you have a great day just um let me know what other things you could have you need help with like somebody asked there was a couple two or three people that asked me about making this and they were confused about separating the sleeves so let me know what you're working on and then i saw and i thought wow i really like that i'm going to try and make one for myself so let me know what you're working on and if you need help just uh just let me know you know what? I don't know. Um, I don't know why people leave a negative comment sometimes. Maybe it's just, um, I don't know. Maybe they just want to, you know, like I know people want to share their opinion, but like I made all the disclosures. I'm not saying these are medical grade masks, but like I said, my hospital, I've already taken 50 of them and the ER doctors and the nurses were so happy and they just asked me, can I bring more? Because they really need them. There's like, I guess they were saying that sometimes last week they had run out of masks and they were having to reuse things. And so, you know, I just want to do my part. I made them for my mom. 
because she's elderly. I don't want her to be getting exposed to anything. Um, she has, you know, some medical issues. And for myself, um, my immunity has been decreased because of the uh, pancreatic disease I had. So I have, and so I, these are pretty good. Uh, and then I always made them with different colors and stuff. So, hey, my cousin Abigail is on. Hi, Prima. How are you doing? <laughs> so, um, you guys, so just look at the video. And um, if you have any other questions, let me know. If you have requests for tutorials, put them in the comments and share this with your friends. Remember to subscribe. There is a link somewhere down here. You hit the subscribe button. There's a little bell. Hit on that. And then you could hit the be notified all the... Um, and we're just be notified from other. Yeah, it, she said they're all doing good. Yeah, my my mom's still doing good too, but everyone's been okay. They're just being isolated. You know, it's kind of people are starting to get a little bit of cabin fever. I work from home anyway, but it just it is getting kind of difficult. And a lot of the stores, everything's closed now. So anyway, have a great day and be safe. Be kind to each other. And remember always that God loves you. Bye-bye.